lot of times you're going to be working with Excel or CSV as a data source for your Power BI or Excel Power Pivot models. And you would want those files to be there on SharePoint so that the refreshes can be automated. In this video, I'm going to talk about that if you have Excel or CSV files and they are kept on SharePoint, how could you then connect them to your Excel Power Pivot or Power BI models using, of course, Power Query. All right, this is going to be fun. Let's start. Okay, first things first, I am here on OneDrive and that's opened on the web version. I've kept a couple of files in this folder called Demo Files Excel. And this is the folder that I would want to connect it either to my Excel or my Power BI Power Query. Now the process of connecting the data from SharePoint is going to be absolutely the same, no matter whether you work in Excel or you work in Power BI. But there are a few nuances that I would like to talk about right at the start. And let's just make a few mistakes and then you'll realize it. To begin with, I'm going to open up Excel and in Excel, I'm going to open up a blank query. So I can just go over to a blank Excel file, click on data, say get data from other sources and I'm going to open up a blank query right here. Once I have the blank query open, the function that I'm going to use right at the source step is going to be something like SharePoint.files. And inside of that, it actually asks me, hey, what's the URL that you would like to get the access from? At this moment, I'm going to hop back to my SharePoint site and I'm going to get the URL right from the top, control C on that. I'm going to come back to my Excel and start to feed the URL within the curly braces right here. I'm going to press Control V and the entire URL is right now pasted. Now, once I do that, it doesn't really read the URL properly, it kind of gives you an error that it's not able to identify it. And what you need to understand is that you only need to paste the root URL, not the full URL. So at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cancel out everything that I have and just probably use the Chandeep Chabra, mysharepoint.com, and that's all about it. That's the root URL. So I'm going to get rid of everything that is there after that. Close the inverted commas, close the bracket, press enter. Now it's obviously going to ask me to authenticate my credentials, which I can do that. I'm going to use the Microsoft account that I have and click on connect. It asks me that, hey, verify your account. I can do that. Click on OK and I can click on connect. Once you have connected with the SharePoint, you're going to see that nowhere I'm going to see the files that I actually need, which is the demo folder. So these are all the files that have just shown up. And if you just go over to the right, you're not going to see that where is the subfolder. So you have a folder path in here. If I just go in the folder path, you can see that this is obviously my SharePoint. It particularly talks about catalogs and everything, but I cannot just take a look at the subfolder that I wanted to have. Now, this is primarily because I have connected it to the personal SharePoint account, not the SharePoint sites account. I'm going to go over to the SharePoint, but this time I'm going to go open up my SharePoint sites. That URL is going to look something like this. chandeepchabra.sharepoint.com slash sites and slash goodly. And that is the URL that I would want to pick. And that is also where I would like to store all my files. I'm going to pick up this particular URL, which is the correct URL for SharePoint. Control C on that. I'm going to hop back to uh, Power Query and cancel out that uh, my SharePoint URL and instead feed the URL that I just copied in the inverted commas, of course. And I'm going to get rid of everything that is there after Goodly. Just cancel that out. Close the inverted commas, close the bracket, press enter. It might just again ask you to authenticate. If it does, please do authenticate. If it doesn't, you're good to go. And now I can probably take a look at all the files that are there. And these are the files that we just spoke about, which at the moment we are looking at only Excel files. So I'm just going to combine the data of the three Excel files. Before we combine the data, let's just take a look at the folder structure that I have. So here are the demo files, which is the name of the folder within which there are two subfolders. These are all the Excel files, which we were just able to see that in the Power Query window. And then I also have a CSV files, which are there right here. So I'm going to show you the techniques to be able to parse both the files, be it Excel or CSV, and then we will proceed on from here. All right, as the first part, what we have been able to do so far is we are able to connect to the SharePoint folder, the right link, and then we are able to take a look at every possible thing which is there in SharePoint. Now we need to zero it down to the files that we actually need. So the way to do that is that on the far right, I have the folder path and I can navigate to the folder path that I would like. So in here, I can just maybe go ahead and search for something like contains. And that is going to be, let's say my Excel files. That was the keyword of the folder. I can click on OK. And now that leaves me with only the subfolder, which has Excel files in the name of it. And then on the far right, I can take a look at all the three Excel files and the files are right here. At the moment, if you take a look, we have all the files in the content folder. And sure enough, you can click on the combine button to be able to combine all the files. But I'd like to have a little more flexibility 
in order to combine the files. And I don't really wanna have the helper queries created once I click on the combine button. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna parse the file myself. So I'll click on the FX to create a new step. And essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm using a function in Power Query so that these binaries are converted into tables and Power Query is able to read them. Now I've done several videos on connecting data from a folder, which is where you also have the similar screen binaries and how do I parse it? I explain the logic in a lot more detail using Excel.workbook function. I highly recommend that you watch that video in order to understand the technique, but I'm going to go a little fast here. Nevertheless, so what I'm trying to do is I am just trying to transform this particular column. So I'll use the function table dot transform columns and I'll start the bracket. That's the name of the table. And the name of the column is obviously the content column. So I'm just going to feed the content column. And within the content column, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to read the binary off and convert it into a table so that I can read it. And the function to do that is going to be Excel dot workbook. So I'll say Excel dot workbook start the bracket underscore to grab the file and then I'll write true to by default promote the headers. All right, this might seem a lot. I've done a few videos in the past and I highly recommend that you watch those videos in order to understand what does all of this mean. Nevertheless, let's keep cruising. Press enter and this is going to read the tables, the binaries and convert them into tables. I can then now click on the expand button to expand the tables and check the name prefix. All the files are here, good to go. And that is the data of every single Excel sheet, like a workbook, like a sheet within that file. So that's the uh, first sheet data, the second sheet data, the third sheet data, all three different Excel files. I can just combine it. So I can just say something like, hey, combine the data of the three tables. I can use the function called table.combine. So table.combine, and I can start the bracket, uh, use the data column, which is this particular column, and close the bracket at the end. And that's pretty much good to go. And that is the data combined from the Excel files, which are there on the SharePoint folder. All right, now let's just repeat the same process and take a look at the small differences that we will have to account for in case the files are not Excel files, but CSV files instead. So we've already built this query at the moment. The name is bad query one. I'm going to call this as Excel files and I will duplicate this query because pretty much everything that we have done in this query, we would need it once again to get the CSV files, but with a few changes. So I'm going to right click on the Excel files, click on duplicate that becomes Excel files two, which is going to be instead as CSV files. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the steps that I have done. The source remains the same. So I still want to go up till the SharePoint folder. That is nice. At the moment, I don't really want to find Excel files, but instead I want to find the CSV files. So I'm just going to change the name of the folder. And that in my SharePoint was CSV files. I believe the CSV was uppercase and I press enter and I get the two CSV files. Back a while ago, we transformed the two Excel files using the function called excel.workbook. But this time the function is going to be csv.document. That's the function to read the CSV or text files. Well, how do we do that? I'm going to click on the FX right here and I'm going to go ahead and say something like table.transform columns. And I will say something like, hey, here is a table that I'm trying to work with, which is this entire table. And the column that I'm trying to work with is the content column. So I will just feed that right in. So in the curly braces content, and then I'm going to say that in the content column, there are, let me just show it to you. So I will say something like in the content column, there are two binaries. I want to pick up the binary, parse it with the function called csv.document. So I'm going to say that, Hey, the function is something like csv.document use that function and underscore gives me the access to that binary right here. Uh, click on okay. And that's the table. That's the data of the CSV. And you can see that that's the data that shows up. At the moment, the only problem is that the headers of the data is not promoted. And obviously I can do that. So that CSV dot document needs to be wrapped around another function called table dot promote headers to be able to promote the headers. And I can just close the bracket at the end uh, right here and then press enter. And that should just work. If I just maybe peek into the table once again, you're going to see that the headers are nicely promoted. Now we have two tables and I can just combine the data of the tables. So I can just click on the FX to make another step and I can say that I'm trying to feed the content column. So I can just reference the content column, C O N T E N T. And then I can say, Hey, the content column contains two tables. I just want to combine them. The function to do that is table dot combine and start the bracket, close the bracket in the end, press enter and the tables are combined this time. However, from a CSV, now you might want to notice that every column is nothing but a text. You can assign the data types and you can move the data further wherever you would like.
All right, that's about it. Getting the data from SharePoint, either you have Excel or CSV files. We took a look at that. Don't make the mistake of getting the data from your personal My SharePoint site, but instead use the organizational one, which is where you will have a sites and then the site name, whatever that might be. You feed that, you put in your credentials and you'll be good to go. Also in the end, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX, my Power Query and the M language courses. These are extremely structured and well-designed courses and I talk about the ways you can solve the problem, understand the pattern of approaching the problem and then you can take that logic and even apply it to your own problems and be confident in solving them. Hundreds of students have joined and they have extremely benefited from my course. And if you would want to learn Power BI from scratch, especially the hard parts, Power Query, DAX, and M language, I'd highly recommend that you please take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. That's been it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Bye now.